Hey, what's up guys? Sam here, and I'll be doing the free video for Friday, July 1st, 2022. So just finished doing the free the premium video for the folks in the gold room, and um, we typically look at everything. We look at all the different sectors, we look at the dollar, we look at bonds, we look at VIX, and the main thing that I was looking at, and I'll kind of give you the diluted version of it, is the need for a hot start next week. Uh, and the reason being is kind of simple. If you look at the uh, the weekly charts, you know that's a pretty strong uh, weekly downtrend. Has all the properties of it. You have the lower lows, the lower highs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Your trend oscillator is pretty busted too. You see how the red line is on top of the green, and both are falling. Not great. You have no thrust down here, so it's a pretty well confirmed bear trend on the weekly time frame. If you look at it on the daily as well. Right, like the 50 is right there, the 21 is here, the 8 is here, and then the 200 is way up here. So that's a bear trend as well. And then if you look at your trend oscillator, this one's really bearish because, well, the red line is on top, and both both lines are below 50. Um, so the market here is not going to change quickly, right? Uh, it's a weekly downtrend. It's a daily downtrend. Um, but they're, the bulls are trying to turn this thing from the inside out, so the time frames that should be uh, most closely monitored going into next week are going to be the 15 minute and the one hour time frame, which is what I'm going to show you here. So on the one hour time frame, what do you have? Well, you have a low here, and you have, an, you have a higher low so far, right? Now, you do need to get above, let's call it 83, which is going to be kind of that previous uh, yesterday's high in terms of, uh, uh, or actually it was uh, Wednesday's high uh, above that key level right there. And then you'll have kind of a double bottom with a higher low. Uh, and then you can very, very quickly actually kind of come back up here and try to test this hourly 200, which has not been tested. Uh, well, on SPX it actually was. On SPY it just got very close and then it failed. So the idea is next week, if you look at this chart here, there's really not a lot of room for error. So let me kind of walk you through the process. The idea is that the bulls need to start hot next week with a bounce uh, in order to rebuild the hourly chart so that it then can then start to help rebuild the daily chart. The weekly chart, we won't even talk about that for now. And the reason being weekly downtrend, daily downtrend, sideways on the hourly, right? And you can see it here on the daily as well. It's just been kind of in a range. So from the inside out, they do have to push the hourly chart, and they have to do it pretty quickly. And the reason being is they don't really have a lot of room for error here, right? If you fail here at the 50, the blue line, and you fail here then at the 21 to hold, then there really isn't a whole lot here under the market other than these lows. And you really don't want to see these lows get retested, because if they get retested, there's a very high chance that they get broken. So the thought process is you go into next week, you have the double bottom, high or low. It's incomplete. It hasn't yet fully triggered above 383 is the level that it would need to trigger above. Basically, you're going to have resistance all through here. So it needs to get right there in order to trigger. And then from there, what do you have? Well, you have kind of this huge pocket of air between 383 and let's call it 391. And going into next week, you're going to start with an hourly squeeze here on SPY, right? which is very important. This is bare neutral because the green line is above the red, but they're both below 50. And then down here, what you would really want to see is a little bit of a thrust signal, which you don't have yet. So the idea is, can they get something started very quickly next week, get it above 383, from there it can chop around a little bit with the ultimate test being up here at this hourly 200. And you know, that, that's what's in play. So you should be looking for that to uh, be the attempt by the bulls. In the event that they are unable to do that and they fail to do that, then watch out below. Um, but at least going into next week, I am giving them the benefit of the doubt that they can. If the edges are thin, it's probably 60-40 that the bulls can do pull this off. Also, be aware that July is one of the more seasonally strong months. So July, pretty much the entire month of July, uh, is very seasonally strong. Um, so I think that might also start to help a little bit 
uh, with, uh, with, with, with getting this done. So that's kind of the big picture stuff here, at least kind of the distilled version of it on Spy is the, the need for a hot start next week. Um, but let me kind of show you a couple of things that also popped up here in our adventures in doing the premium video for the Gold Room. So the first one was going to be XBI. And one thing that I noticed while looking at the different sectors was the, uh, the IWM is actually slightly leading the SPY. Now, why does IWM matter in a conversation about XBI? IWM has a lot of XBI components, right? So if you're ever going to trade biotech, you really do want to see that the uh, IWM has the potential to lead, which it, at least for now, going into next week, it does. So that gets me thinking in terms of XBI. And you can see here the vast difference inside of the uh, the XBI on the hourly chart relative to what we were just looking at. We were just looking at the SPY, and the SPY is probably about right here in the process. And you can see all of this uh, kind of lead time, if you will, or advancement relative to the SPY. So tons of outperformance here. Also on a daily time frame, the SPY does not look like that, right? The SPY looks, you know, the SPY is down here somewhere, right? So tons of outperformance here. I like to see the crossover, right? That hasn't happened in a while. Uh, the hourly has been crossed over for a good while. You have thrust signals underneath the thing. Um, this pattern here that's developed kind of looks like a little bit like a flagging pattern to me. So the ultimate target here on XBI is gonna be 83. So I always like to give you guys a little bit of a challenge in these videos. Uh, see if you can find the best thing that would benefit from XBI. And I don't know the answer, so it's not really a challenge as much as it is. I'm just curious to see what you guys say. If you find something that's in biotech that looks better than this, throw it in the chat and we'll review it. Uh, we'll even go back review it next week uh, so that you can kind of follow up with it. But uh, I'm very much liking the setup here in XBI. And then it also has that same squeeze that everything else has on the hourly time frame going into next week. But you see how this one already has a clear upward bias. This is significantly better. And you now have a green thrust signal here. This is a very, very potent setup, guys. So the target here, this dotted line, is going to be the anchored VWAP to the beginning of the year. And you can see it's also 3 ATR up. So 83 is kind of the target on XBI, and I think this is a very, very potent setup um, going into next week. And if you see something in XBI, like a component of XBI that looks even better than this, drop it in the chat and we'll review it. Um, the other one was, so not very exciting, not very exciting, but I was seeing a little bit of strength here in XLP. Now again, this is relative strength, right? I understand this chart looks kind of messy, but relative to the SPY, which is always kind of our comparison, it looks way better. Now, I don't want to trade XLP here, but it does look better than the SPY. But I don't want to trade it because it's too messy and there's something better that's inside of it. So if you pull up Coke, KO, uh, you'll see that it actually has kind of a very good setup here. Kind of a very good setup. So with Coke, one, you're getting a ton of relative outperformance relative to the SPY and to its sectors sector group, which is the XLP. Uh, and aside from the... Uh, the, the uh, relative outperformance to its peers and to the market. Weekly squeeze, stacked weekly moving averages, very important weekly trend. You see how the green line's above the magenta? And very important, you see how it's trying to give you a mid-level buy arrow? Mint, 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 mint. So I like this setup a lot. Might want to let it come in a little bit. Next time that you see an hourly squeeze here on Coke, it might be worth buying. but you know, kind of a little bit of a safe play. So two different ideas here. I could give you a couple more. I'm probably not going to look at them with you on, 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 on this, you know, in the session here, but I'll give you a couple more. Uh, UPS, um, Costco, um, K-Web, the, the Chinese names. Keep an eye on those. I think those are still very much in play. Look very similar to biotech. Uh, and then I'm kind of looking for a high beta tech. So things like Crowd, anything in ARC, Zoom, ZM, things like that. Of course, this all ties back together. So let's finish the idea here with Coke. Uh, Coke on its own is a very solid setup. The closer you can get it to 62, the better. I don't expect for it to pull back that hard, but the closer you can get it to 62, the better. You like to take this weekly squeeze to its logical conclusion, uh, which in a good market is a new high basically on Coke above that high. So very clean setup there. We already looked at XBI.
And then I'm going to kind of round back here on SPY and just finish off the conversation. And that is the markets aren't giving you much here in terms of the daily or the weekly. So you kind of have to play this game from the inside out. And uh, the inside out game here is the hourly. So keep, it, keep a very close eye on the hourly uh, chart on the indices. And they need to start hot next week because they don't really have a lot of room to pull back, right? If they start to pull back, they're going to break. So the idea is uh, you have the double bottom. 383 is your breakout level and you start next week with a squeeze so they have to make hay with this very much you know pretty much quick very very quickly and if the spy decides to fire off that hourly squeeze I think that all the names that we just looked at uh, including the ones that we didn't look at and that I just told you about I think all of those are really good plays in the event that the squeeze does not fire long and they start to break support then watch out below because everything is really set up to try to fire long. So if they fail, you're going to get a really quick uh, break of support to the downside. Uh, one last thing here before we part ways is this doesn't change any of the bigger picture stuff that I've been covering with you guys in these Friday videos. So I've covered like, you know, SPY 340, you know, SPX, you know, down to 3200. Uh, all of that stuff is still 100% in play. But can we get a July rally that matches up with seasonality now that the uh, the worst quarter since like what 1970 is in the books uh, maybe get a little bit of that relief rally that then sets up the later fall uh, you know closer to September or October very much in play guys so keep an open mind that uh, the summer months here coming up might skew a little bit bullishly but also understand your chart triggers and for now it's going to be the spy hourly that triggers everything so hopefully this was helpful. I look forward to seeing what uh, biotech stocks you guys put in the chat. Hopefully you'll have some good ones for me. And we'll come back next week and check some of those out. All right, guys. Thanks for the time. Thanks uh, for stopping by and watching our stuff. Uh, be sure to leave us a like before you go somewhere else on the YouTubes. It really does help us with uh, the Google algorithm gods. And uh, aside from that, have a great long weekend, guys. Um, I'll tell you guys what I always tell the, the premium folks. Find time to be a human being this weekend. Right? We spend so much time in front of these screens, 16 by 9 screens. Go out there, get on a boat, hug a friend, hug a family member, hug your dog, hug your cat, hug your squirrels. Whatever it is that you got in your life that's valuable to you, make sure that they know that this weekend. All right, guys, that's my time. See you next Friday. Cheers. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments that I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me.